And it's my view that at the end of the day, self-preservation and economic welfare is going to be the most important to the Saudi leadership. So I believe that they will continue to anchor a large production cut. I mean, if Saudi Arabia is not going to pull any barrels, then there's really no discussion about an OPEC cut. But it's really in their economic self-interest to do so. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens right after that OPEC meeting. If they pull those barrels, how does President Trump respond? And at the same time, you have the U.S. Congress, you know, both sides of the aisle pushing for tougher sanctions on Saudi Arabia, blocking arms sales. They've sent a second Magnitsky letter up to the president asking specifically if the crown prince was involved in the Khashoggi killing. So going forward, I think U.S.-Saudi relations are going to remain strained really because of what's happening on Capitol Hill. Halima, does, um, does the analyst community within uh, the energy space take the president's tweet uh, seriously, this idea that maybe he did and maybe he didn't? I mean, I think the analyst community takes seriously the idea that President Trump does have the ability to force OPEC's hand. I mean, we saw last summer, it was President Trump publicly asking for Saudi Arabia and the rest of OPEC to put barrels on the market. And what did they do? They responded. You know, you had Saudi Arabia. If you look at the November, what we've seen for you know early November production, I mean, they've taken production up to about 10.8 million barrels. On certain days, they've hit 11, apparently, by drawing down inventories. So you see a situation where Saudi was very, very quick to respond, Russia was quick to respond, and potentially oversupplied the market going into the Iran sanctions decision. So I think what a lot of analysts are worried about or concerned about is if the Saudis continue to try to placate Trump, they are going to be oversupplying this market. Halima, can I bring you back to the U.S. for a minute? I'd love to get your sense in terms of what the shale producers here are yeah. going to be thinking about next year in terms of whether they keep their budgets where they are, accelerate them, or even pull back given this huge pullback in the price in such a short amount of time. Well, I think this is such an interesting question when you bring up U.S. shale producers because you have a situation where if President Trump really wants prices to continue to decline you know, further, that is going to really hurt the U.S. shale industry. So I think it's a very interesting dynamic that must be unfolding right now in the White House between, on the one hand, wanting to sort of help the U.S. consumer by having low oil prices, but you have a very important U.S. industry, the U.S. shale industry, that will be really hurt if prices continue to fall further. So I think that is going to become part of the discussions. I mean, I'm wondering what Harold Hamm is advising President Trump right now in terms of the message he's delivering to Saudi Arabia.